In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this really cool interactive slide, whereas if you click on one person, it will go and enlarge that person and give the explanation. You can add a name, you can add a job description, that doesn't matter. Now, the cool thing is you can go back and forth, so you don't have to go in a linear way, you can go from whichever order that you like. Now, you can also use this to go linear, so if you don't want to have that interactivity, you can still use it in a linear way and go back and forth between your slides. Now it's a really nice and dynamic way to present in PowerPoint. What I'll do in this tutorial is I'll split it up into multiple parts. First, we'll make the base version of the slide so we have all the pictures in place. Then we'll look at the morph transition. We'll also look at how we can make it interactive so you can make it clickable. And eventually we'll look at how we can add some names to it or some text and content for your topic. And we're starting from a blank slide in PowerPoint. First thing you want to do is you want to drag in the images. So I'm going to select the images and drag them all into the slide. You can see that some of the images are a bit wider. So let me scale those down just a little bit. You can see that some of the images are wider than the others. And we want to have them all in the same shape. Now a quick trick to do this is you select them all. You go to the height and width. You keep the aspect ratio locked because we don't want to distort it. And then the width, you maybe say you want five or you want seven if you want a, bit, a little bit bigger. Now, if we do the same for the height and we do, for example, 12, you can see that it changes again. So the width is changing it because we lock that aspect ratio. Now, what you might want to do is you want to unlock it and then type in 12, but you see that it starts to distort the images. So we don't want that. What we want to do in this case is we want to crop it so that it all nicely matches. So if we have one image that we like the aspect ratio of, and in this case, it's going to be quite easy. It's going to be the yellow one. Let's send that to back and then overlay the others and just crop it, adjust the crop mark. So it's the same and then adjust it like this until we have person in the same position. So we do just like that and then we release and then we can overlay the others, maybe also on the yellow one for consistency and we just crop it. And I'm also going to adjust the crop marks so that the persons or almost all the persons going to be around the same size. So you see that some of the pictures, the they are a bit more zoomed in. So I'm going to try it's It's not always easy to get it perfect, but I'm going to try to get it in a way that it feels sort of balanced on the slide so that this one is, for example, a little bit small. I'm going to increase it and readjust it so that it nicely blends in together and it feels like equally balanced. So one more and this one was already quite good. So I'm just going to readjust that one in the size to something like this. So you see now all the images look quite similar in size and that's what we want to get for a nice effect. Let me scale them down just a bit. If you hold them all together, it won't matter or it will all scale in proportion. Select all the images, crop, crop the shape, and then we're going to crop it to a rounded rectangle. Now, if you want to adjust the corners just a little bit like this, I only want a small rounded corner. I can hold Ctrl Shift C, select the others while holding Shift and Ctrl Shift V to adjust that rounded corner and give it the same rounded corner. So it's a quite easy shortcut. You don't have to manually tweak it on every single one of them. Hey, real quick, if you want to make impactful slides every single time and never make a bad slide again, I have an entire program available that teaches you these slide fundamentals. So you'll never make a poor slide again in your meetings, in your sales conference, webinar, no matter what the occasion is. So if you want to learn how to communicate with impact, make sure to check the link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Let me just space them out evenly. You can also select them, go to align and then distribute horizontally for evenly spacing. Now I'm going to drag them to the right side of the slide. And what we're going to do is we're going to create that pop out effect. As soon as we talk about one person, it sort of pops out a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate the page. And on the second slide, I'm going to position this one in the center and make it a little bit larger. And then I'm going to hold control, scroll backwards and then select the other ones and position them next to the original one or to the center one. Now, if you want to keep the proportions in place and if you're happy with the proportions, what you can do is you can put some guides. So I'm going to the view tab and put some guides on. You see now it has an horizontal and a vertical guide. You can right click, grid, get grid and guides, and then you add a horizontal one. I'm going to add this one to the top and repeat that for the bottom as well. So we have an indication of how large or how small it should be. And then we're going to add a vertical guide as well to put them to the left side of the image and do that once more for the right side. This way we create a box around the image that sort of gives us the idea of where we should put it. And if you want for good measure, we're also going to add a horizontal one for the 
smaller images. This will help us quite a lot in scaling it right and making sure the proportions are correct. So this will be quite good. You see that the guides, they stay consistent on all of the slides. So that's convenient. Now we're just going to duplicate this slide again. So control D, we're going to scale this one down until we meet that border. And then we position it to the other side. We put the second image in place and hold the I'm holding the control shift key on a Mac. I think it's the same on Windows to scale it from the center. And then we hold those three, hold shift while dragging so they stay on the same line. And then we just repeat those steps. So duplicate the slide again, make this one smaller until it fits the page, put these to the side until we get those assistant markings that is quite helpful. And then increase that one and position it to the side again. We're going to repeat that for the others as well. So reduce in size, put them next to each other, drag them to the side, and then the blue one, increase in size. So you see it's starting, once you get the hang of it, once you get the shortcuts, it will go quite fast. So it's quite a nice effect that you can do. It takes a little bit of work, but then again, the result I think is really worth it if you have something special. Scale this one up, the green one, and that's the last one. So now that we have set the basics in place, what I'm going to do is I'll show you the morph transition, how it works, and then we'll look at the interactivity, how we can make it clickable and how we can add some layers of text to the slides as well. So now that we have all of the slides, I'm going to select them all, go to transitions and morph. And if we then play it from the first slide and put this on full screen, we have the image. And as soon as we click, it morphs into that larger one. We click again and it morphs to the second one and everything nicely rotates like a gallery it's a pretty cool effect, I think. Now it's set on two seconds per transition. If you want that to go faster, that is perfectly possible. Or if you want that to go slower as well. Now every shift is a manual click for me as a presenter. If you want to change the timings, what you can do is you can select it and maybe do it to one second. And let's preview that again from this one. And if I then click, you see it will go quite a lot faster. So the shifting will happen faster in between the slides. So if that's what you want, that's how you change it. Now let's have a look at how we can make this interactive. So this first slide for me, it's not really the most important one. I think I might delete it later on. You know what, for this tutorial, I'll delete this one so we can easily work with the numbers. So select the second image, go to link, slide, and it's slide number two. Go to number three and link it to slide number three. Number four, and that's going to be number four. So if you work like this, it's, it's quite easy to figure out what the slide is, you can always watch on the left side as well. So there we have it. So that we have linked those images to the slide, which means if we now preview it, we can see that as soon as we hover over one of the images, the cursor changes to that clickable cursor. And if we click that, it will automatically move to that part. But that is now only on the first slide. So if we want to repeat this step for the other slides as well. Now we've linked all of those images. We want to link the other ones as well. So I'm going to link to slide number one on the yellow, slide number three for purple. We don't have to do two since we're already on that slide. Slide number four and slide number five. This one's a bit off screen, so in theory you wouldn't have to do it um, because it's not visible. Then on this one, we're going to link those as well. So slide number one, two, three doesn't have to happen since it's the large one, four, and five. And then for the other one, I'll just speed this process up, but you get the idea. And now once you have done that, you can test it and put it in preview mode and see how it interacts between all of the slides. So we see we have now number two, let's skip to number three, the purple one. If we click it, it will nicely adjust and appear on that slide. Now we can go back to number one if you want, or maybe the red one, let's go back in order. And we go to red. If we want to go to blue, we just click blue. We click on the green. And if we then want to go back to, for example, purple, you can do that as well. Now, the cool thing is you can also just use the next button and go to the next one in line. So it keeps that order in place. So you can just skip through it regularly, but it's a nice way of presenting. Let's say you're introducing your team and maybe a question pops up about the girl in red. So you can just click it again and then go back to that person. So now we have seen how we can add that morph transition and get that dynamic interlinking effect. Now what we want to do is we want to look at adding some text to the slide. So if you want to have some information about a person, maybe it's a word, it's a job description that can be done in a couple of ways. So let me show you how to do that as well. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
create two options. So first one is the simplest one. So let's go to home, add a text box, and let's give this one a name. So let's say it's Jake. We give it a nice font, poppins, center it in the middle, make it a bit larger, and then maybe do a bit of gray tone. That will look nice. And if we then just copy that text box and give the people different names, maybe this Marie, Jennifer, let's do all of them, Angela, and this one is, let's say, Monica. So if we now click on or preview this in preview mode, you can see the name appears below it. We can also click on another one and that name will shift to the name there. You can add maybe a job description or extra titles as well. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to really master those principles and get good slides every single time, I have an entire program available that teaches you exactly that so that you can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.